everyone today i would be giving you some information on agile principles so basically the agile principles are built upon the four values of the agile manifesto so if you have not got to see the agile the values of the agile manifesto you can always look at the video that i made on it and the link to the video is given in the description box so let's get into the agile principles so totally there are 12 principles and the very first principle is customer satisfaction through early and continuous software delivery so customers are always satisfied with software that's delivered at the earliest rather than them waiting for a long period of time so when you look at the traditional waterfall um, approach where a product or a project is being executed customers will have to wait till the entire project is done and then they would have a you know the chance to look at the product so the waiting period is kind of long so when you look at this particular approach in Agile, the customer gets to see the software at the earliest at regular intervals. The second principle is accommodate changing requirements throughout the development process. So you can never, you know, um, estimate what, or you can never, you know, uh, come to a conclusion that these are the fixed set of requirements that the customer would definitely need. Customer requirements might change at any time during the phase of your project. So it's always good to entertain these changes because at the end of the day, the customer's satisfaction is what matters. So always foster teams and environments where they would be able to encourage these changes and adapt to these changes. Traditionally, when you look at the waterfall methodology, usually the customer comes in with certain requirements and then a document and a contract is signed and there is no chance of any changes during the phase of the project. So to avoid this scenario is when the agile principle came in where changes can be encouraged and fostered and also entertained. The third principle is frequent delivery of working software. So in Agile, there are teams that work in sprints and iterations and promote frequent software delivery. So always make sure that the software delivered is a working software. And I repeat it, it's a working software and not just a mock-up or a half-baked system because always the customer should be able to use the working software, perform certain functions and provide feedbacks. So this is the software that needs to be delivered at the end of every iteration over sprint. The fourth principle is collaboration between the business stakeholders and developers throughout the project. So when you look at the traditional waterfall method, there was not much of interactions between stakeholders and the developers. Usually the business analysts acted as bridges between the stakeholders and the developers. But during in this particular approach, the stakeholders, the business analysts and the developers, all of them can come together and they can collaborate. They can share their different various views, various aspects about the product, the various concerns that they might have, the various constraints so that all of them can be on the same page. So when everyone are on the same page, better decisions can be made. But this does not mean that stakeholders would have full control or micromanagement over the development team. It's always good to foster certain, uh, foster a very good environment for collaboration and not micromanagement. The fifth principle is support, trust and motivate the people involved. So support environments to encourage team members to share, demonstrate and implement new ideas. A highly motivated team is most likely to perform well when compared to a demotivated team. So always when a team or a team member feels valued and appreciated, the team and team member tends to contribute more to the project and the project tends to be more successful when compared to demotivated teams and team members. Principle 6 is enable face-to-face -face interactions. So face-to-face -face communications are more effective and it avoids miscommunications and misunderstandings. Especially for teams that work together, it's always good to work in an environment where you can foster and you can, you know, make use of face-to-face -face communications because through this, it will avoid various miscommunications and misunderstandings. And if you look at the traditional approach, people might be just sending mails and chat messages, etc. 
but always think of the situation when you might need a particular idea or you might need some insights or you might need certain advices it's always good in person to go in person and speak to the person rather than you know going through a different medium so through agile it fosters a lot of face to face interactions the seventh principle is working software is a primary measure of progress so progress is always measured by the working software and the value that you deliver and provide through the customer though your project might have various aspects such as analysis research wireframes mockups designs etc yet at the end of the day it's the working software that speaks and all that matters to the customer so no, no you cannot go to the customer and you cannot tell them i have done so much of research i have done so much of documentation and this is all that i have but yet you don't have a working software in hand so no ma- matter whatever you have it's finally the working software that actually portrays your development and progress in your software principle 8 is agile processes to support a consistent development pace since agile supports iterations and sprints there's always a consistent pace at which the team delivers the software so usually sprints are up to 2 to 4 weeks so it's always this particular pace at which the development team works to develop and to release a software continuously so no matter what is being developed the team always works at a consistent pace principle 9 is attention to technical design and design enhances agility so since uh, agile supports enhancements changes and flexibility the teams also need to make sure that the architecture and design support such changes and enhancements in the future imagine having an architecture and design that does not support scalability and you know enhancements it does not support the addition of new features etc then it's going to be a failure because you cannot evolve and you cannot enhance your product so always keeping in mind of these flexibility requirements the changes and the changing requirements you need to keep in mind and develop the architecture and design so it can be scalable for future use principle 10 is simplicity so always make things simple and neat build what's needed do not overwhelm your customers with too many features and too many functionalities that's not needed and always make sure that your software is simple but powerful principle 11 is self organizing teams encourage great architectures requirements and designs so self organizing teams are a group of members with mixed roles skill sets coming from various backgrounds from various domains with various years of experience so keeping so many aspects and nuances into mind having all these team members in your team really helps to make better and excellent architectures and designs as everyone's perspective suggestions are taken into consideration so unlike waterfall generally it's every team that works independently without having in mind the considerations and constraints of other teams but when you come into agile you have a team with all the members needed to make up that project and every member's suggestions and you know aspects and concerns are taken into consideration to build excellent and great architectures and designs and the final principle is regular reflections on how to become more effective so encourage you know team members to run retrospect meetings so by encouraging your team members through this meeting they will be able to discuss and look back on the previous sprint what was being executed they would be able to analyze things such as what went right what went wrong what are the requirements that need to be made what are the enhancements that need to be improved and this helps them to avoid certain mistakes in future and also to adapt to successful strategies and methods so that the project can be more successful and progress in a very positive manner so these are the 12 principles of the agile manifesto i hope it was useful to you so if you do like the video please do give it a like and also subscribe to this channel and also do provide your feedbacks thank you so much